Hello everyone, this is Ken Hayashi. Uh, thank you very much for joining today's lecture. Uh, this has been by request, so this is going to be a lot longer than the typical YouTube video that's out there. It is a combination of all the work that I have just uh, created over the last year and just putting it all together. Uh, obviously, if I had explained every single moment of this, and you'll know what I'm talking about, it'd be hours long. So you can do all your research, and I'll definitely place the links on all that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. I'm just going to just go ahead and continue on. Now, a little bit of background of who I am. Uh, my name's Ken Hayashi. A uh, little background, I went to Oxford University. Uh, I did study uh, English literature and classical theater history there. Uh, I had an opportunity to do that. I also uh, do have a, an off-Broadway play that I've written uh, that I've produced in New York uh, by the foundation of the Dramatist Guild, which was an honor for me to uh, have a pl uh, an off-Broadway play uh, produced in New York. So I am more of a writer. Um, that's on that sense. Uh, on top of that, I am also an entrepreneur. I'm the author of the book Millionaire by 26. You can pick it up at any uh, bookstore, Amazon, anything like that. Go look it up, please. And I am, again, going to show you all the, the links uh, down below so that you don't have to go scramble and go do that. I'll have all that. Stop the video anytime and go copy and paste that link. Okay, so we just move forward. I've owned other business. I've owned several types of businesses, including like a foreign currency hedge fund at one point. I've owned a direct marketing company. I've also been a business consultant uh, to a couple of people as a as a writer, as a copywriter myself. I've also my client also includes our current president, of the United States. He wasn't president then, but I was Donald Trump's copywriter at one point for one of his companies. Uh, here is also I've been a consultant to uh, many people, including Mark Victor Hansen from Chicken Soup for the Soul on some of his projects. There, right there, is uh, Dr. John Gray says uh, Ken Hayashi provides practical insight and simple wealth building techniques that anyone can do. Dr. John Gray, author of Men Are from Mars, Women Are from Venus. I'm sure you know who that is, and uh, Brian Tracy. If many of you know who that is, uh, this book shows you how to jump the line and become financially successful faster than you ever thought possible. Brian T Tracy, uh, author and international renowned speaker. Thank you very much. And today, I am also a business consultant for Kevin Harrington and Michael Beckwith's new company, uh, Mindset24 Global, where I am tr training individuals on how to have a samurai mindset, right? Samurai mindset. Uh, that's my heritage as well as what I type of mindset that I had to have in order to achieve some of the successes that I have, right? So I'll explain a little bit more about that in, uh, in, the, in the next few minutes. I do also have a personal life, okay? Uh, on top of being an entrepreneur, I have a personal life, my personal life. I, I have four uh, children um, that I care for very much, <laughs> of course. Um, that's my, my four beautiful children, and my three daughters, my young son right there. Um, I also have four separate black belts. I've been trained in that in over 20 years. And uh, I had an opportunity to work with the uh, uh, MCMAC uh, program, which is the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, where I got to train Marines on getting their second degree in their MCMAC program. So uh, I had an honor to do that. Uh, also, I've also trained 50 world karate champions, mostly kids, uh, but they it is a world level competition. We have got representatives from many countries and we're there. It's large, one of the largest competitions uh, in karate before it goes to the Olympics in the world. And uh, trained over 50 world karate champions in forms, point fighting, continuous fighting, and, and uh, various sorts. So that's a little bit about my personal life. Uh, the thing is this. I have a secret, and this is a secret that I chose not to share, and it's a secret that I've held for 25 years, and this is 2018, and I'm about to reveal to the world my secret. Now there's a reason I don't, <laughs> I haven't shared this secret, and think about this for a moment. Let's say you are working for the United States government as like a Air Force pilot or something like that, right? 
and you're flying around uh, as an officer uh, for the United States military and you see something that flies by you and it doesn't look ordinary it looks a little unusual and you you land and it's not like you just missed you know like a little blip there you saw it fly right by you're like whoa what was that so you land and your commanding officer says listen uh, do not go running to the press and tell people what you saw or it's treason right so you know you keep it a, you keep it a secret or you know people would just think you're crazy if you saw something up you know while you're flying around doing your missions so just think of it that way so I have the secret that I cared not to share because it would pull me into that category and I just don't want to be that I mean I have a I have a regular life I don't I don't want to be thrown into that category but today I am about to share this by request by many people okay so this is here it is now as I'm about to share this let me kind of pause uh, uh, have you ponder a question that I'm gonna have towards you okay think about this for a second let's say that you uh, there was an author out there okay and this author came up with a fictional story and that fictional story is about a bodybuilder all right and this bodybuilder uh, becomes uh, comes over to this country and becomes an actor and he plays a very iconic role where he ends up uh, playing like an android right? and eventually he gets out of acting and then writes uh, it's, it's a story about this actor that becomes eventually governor of the land now the question I like to ask you is who would that story be about so question number one and let's all participate here. It'll make the experience a lot more fun, interactive. Otherwise, it's a lot of information that I'm going to pr provide to you. I, I'm guaranteeing it's a lot of information. You probably have to listen to this more than once, okay? especially if you are very interested in the story and the reason you're watching this in the first place. Who would that story uh, be about? Hmm. Okay, so that's question one. Now, Again, uh, right now, let's just make this interactive. So I want to go ahead and pause the video and type in the answer in the comment section right now in, on YouTube. All right. All you have to do is pa hit pause on the video. Who would that story be about? A fictional person says, hey, listen, I wrote this story about a bodybuilder, becomes an actor, uh, but he plays an iconic role as an android and becomes, eventually becomes governor of the, la of the land. Who would that story be about? So go ahead and pause that video now and t type that answer in. Question one, so write question one or Q1 and your answer. We're going to have a couple of questions here, so participate, okay? And at least, at least, if you don't want to type it in and be accountable for your answers, okay, some of the questions are a little harder than others, that's okay, but I'd like to be interactive here, so go ahead and type that in. If you're not going to do that, go ahead and grab a piece of paper and just write it down on a piece of paper. Get a blank piece of paper right now, pause it, and just write it down. Question one, what's your answer? All right, so pause the video now. All right, so hopefully you came back and you did pause the video. You didn't just listen through, but that's where it is. Okay, so that's the answer. And by the end of this video I will go over all the answers see how you did okay that's that's probably an easy answer question but we're gonna go through that all right so that's question number one so I'd like to share with you a secret of mine okay uh, this is on the video called uh, who is the samurai wizard if everyone looks up on top right there it'll always have a YouTube uh, it's not a, a live link because I can't put so many li links up there but that's the name of the video you can google uh, go on youtube and type that in i'll also have the link in the description below so that you can just go ahead and look at it on your time on your own time and at leisure but i'm just going to go ahead and just check out the video so let's take a look at the video now all right this is the secret that i've kept for 25 years all right here it is 
Ken Hayashi is an author, entrepreneur, and father of four. Hayashi's story begins as a young boy, where he discovers that both his parents practice magic. His father having been written up in the Smithsonian, and his mother had been a performing magician and was an actual practicing witch. He then discovers and attends the only real school of magic in the world, the world famous Academy of Magical Arts. This is where he honed his psychic and telepathic abilities, witchcraft and wizardry, specializing in both light and dark arts of magic. There he meets a young boy and a girl who also practice magic. Hayashi and the girl wizard eventually become the most powerful wizards at the academy. And as a teenage boy, eventually beats the number one most commercially successful magician in history, David Copperfield. While David Copperfield had made a motorcycle appear, Hayashi, also known as the one and only Samurai Wizard, made a Corvette appear. While Copperfield flew on stage by himself, the Samurai Wizard had a magic production show with over 180 backup dancers. And the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences selected the Samurai Wizard over Copperfield to open a couple of Emmy Award shows in 1992. The Samurai Wizard is a powerful story that may have been the inspiration behind a similar story written and released several years later of A Boy Who Lived. First published in 1997, it is a fictional fantasy story of a boy being a wizard who discovers both his parents happen to be wizards, attends a school of magic where he studies witchcraft and wizardry. There he meets a boy and a girl who practices magic. He rises to become the greatest wizard there at the school. Then, as a teenage boy, eventually beats the most evil wizard of all time. The fact that five out of five specific key components matching up in both the real and the fictional story of the boy wizard has the exact same odds of winning the lottery, or may just be a strange coincidence. However, the story does not just stop there. The story continues with the protector that had been there throughout the entire journey. The magical golden sphere that allowed both characters to be celebrated at both wizarding schools. The arch nemesis that continues to attempt to torment them. The twins. And finally, Oxford University, the school where the samurai wizard actually attends which happens to be the exact school where the movie version of the fictional story had been filmed. With the additional five identical coincidences to match up again, it's as if someone happened to win the lottery. Twice. The Samurai Wizard had been documented by television reporters, newspaper coverages, magazines, live show performances, and he had millions of fans around the world, from all across the United States, Japan, and the United Kingdom. The Samurai Wizard is a factual story of a boy wizard, or the real boy who lived, who had real life adventures, both in the wizarding world and in the real world. To learn more of the true story of the Samurai Wizard, Subscribe now, comment and share with any other fans of the Teenage Boy Wizard that beats the greatest wizard in the world. And also watch the other evidence documentaries, real proof of the real story of the boy who lived. Okay, so that was something that was part of my life a long time ago. And I cared not to share that with anybody till now. Now, some people may think, well, well, of course you wouldn't want to share that. That sounds ridiculous that that was actually, if, if that is true. So that's what today's lecture is going to be about. Is that something that actually did happen? So let's just, just really quickly just go over the review. By the way, this is my life, what happened from the time of 1983 through 1992. Okay, that's when I graduated high school in 1992. Um, this I had accomplished all of that before I graduate high school uh, and then if you know the Harry Potter story got 
published in 1997. And these are some of the details. Obviously, I can't go into the full lecture, and I'll explain that why, because there are plenty of videos, and I'll give you all the links to them again, uh, that talk about all that. So we're talking about these five things that match, parents that are magicians, you know, uh, school of magic, boy and girl magician, all these things, um, where I actually do a side-by-side -side comparison on some of these. That's actually the real school, Academy of Magical Arts. It's at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. It is a private club, and it is not open to the public. It's not a tourist attraction. It's usually open only, uh, to, well, not usually. It's only open to the Hollywood elites and people that are members of that club. And in order to become a member, it's a huge application process in order to become a member of that club. Anybody just can't show up and want to go, hey, I'd like to make reservations, check it out. You can't do that. So that's the video where I'm explaining uh, just the just the tip of the iceberg of the differences right so we go over all that and we're not going to go over all this right now uh, this is what had happened I had beaten David Copperfield uh, by size of my illusion the scale of my show 180 performers versus a single person and the, uh, the, uh, the, the size the scale and the status status was I did the Emmys well, he did not do the Emmys. I got selected to do the Emmys. He did not. He didn't do the Oscars that year or, or anything else, the Grammys or the Tonys. So that's what it was my life. Yes, it's not a fictionalized evil wizard, and I don't think David Copperfield's evil at all, but he was the greatest wizard in the world, according to uh, Forrest Magazine. He is the most commercially successful wizard in the world or magician in the world, okay, in history. Uh, and there's the, the, the thing as we saw in the video, Golden Spheres, the Protector guy, the twins. So this is all review. We've already saw that. And I, as I explained, I went to Oxford University. And then the, the, the funny thing about it matching up so closely with my story. Okay? And that's what you see in that video. It's obviously a short video. Okay? Oxford and Oxford. Okay. Now, uh, and that's like winning water twice. So the question number two is why does the boy wizard stories match that is what today's seminar lecture will be about now do not stop and write it down now i'm going to give you a couple options okay this question has been posed on to other people in the past and we've had some common answers that people have said but do not answer that question just yet i know in your mind you're probably thinking well, why does the story match? You may have some ideas. But go ahead and write it down when it's appropriate. So I'm going to give you some information first, and then you can decide, hey, this is the time for me. Uh, I'm going to tell you, this is the time for you to go ahead and type your answer in. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. So play, let's play along here. Let's have some fun here. Okay. You're going to listen to this by request by many people. So let's just play along here. If you're going to shut off and say, hey, listen, the story does not match. This is all a lie. I, I can't watch this. Then don't watch this. That's fine. I'm not here to pound this onto your brain. But for the people that really want to know why does the story match, on today's lecture, I am finally, after 25 years, over 25 years, I'm going to explain why the story happens to match. I'm going to explain that. Okay. So if you want to know that, Tag along. All right. So the first one is because it's a lie. It's a lie. Someone's lying to you. Okay. Second one is B, I'm copying Rawlings' story. Right? I'm just writing on her coattails and obviously copying her story to make it look like I somehow had an exact same life of her character, Harry Potter. Okay, that's B. C, magicians. Fine, maybe it does match, but it doesn't matter because magicians are not wizards. Wizards is obviously the mythological wizard out there, and magicians are just, you know, people doing silly card tricks and stuff like that. You're just a guy pulling cards out of, you know, like rabbits out of a hat and doing card tricks and coin tricks and, and trying to claim that you're freaking Harry Potter. That's ridiculous. Magicians are not wizards, okay? So are you so 
with me so far? It's one of these answers, by the way. It's going to be one of these answers, okay? Next one is, it's a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. You know what? Harry, J.K. Rowling came up with this wonderful, fantastic story that has, you know, hit the hearts of millions and millions of people across America, United, uh, the, the UK, and the world, and it's just a coincidence that they happen to match. Okay, and finally, it was based on a true story that the Harry Potter story was actually based on a true story. So think about that for a second. Do not answer yet because I'm going to provide you some information so that you could make an informed decision. Does that make sense? Can can I provide you some information so that you can make some informed decision? And you know what? If you got some friends and family with you right now and you're watching this video, have them come over, crowd around this video right now and have them watch and have them take the quiz and see who thinks they know the answer. I guarantee you it's going to be one of these five answers. Is it a lie? Was I copying Rawlings' story? Magicians are just not wizards. It's a coincidence. It's just a coincidence or it's based on true events. Okay? So that's the answer. Okay? And, and by the way, the only two people in the world that knows the answers is J.K. Rowling and myself. Just FYI. Okay? Just if you have an opinion that's maybe something what they've read or your certain beliefs that you have because you have a connection to the book, that's fine. But the only two people that really know the answer is her and I. Why does the Boy Wizard story match? All right, so let's continue on. Let's just move along here. All right. So, again, the link up there, YouTube, these are the links up there. It's called the Hogwarts Castles versus the Magic Castle. And I've got a second video called The Real School of Wizardry. So every time I'm going through these slides, make sure to take a note of some of these up there because each one of those videos, they can last anywhere from, some of them are only five minutes long, 10 minutes long, some of them are 30 minutes long to explain some of these things because it takes a long time to explain all this. I'm not gonna do that on today's video. I'm just gonna try to breeze by it. But if you want the evidence without you just jumping to conclusions, go ahead and take a look at it. Look at those videos. If you want to Google this stuff, go ahead and Google, Google it as well. The only thing you cannot Google is who I am before the, the secret that I had kept this whole time. All right. All right. So first things first, in that thing about the first, there's 10 things that match up. Okay, with the current story, but let's just even look at the different the 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 similarities between Hogwarts Castle versus the Magic Castle, and that's that video where you you'll see that the differences between the two. I'm sorry, the similarities between the two. Let's just go into that. The Magic Academy of Magical Arts and the School of Wizardry, and that's the name of it. actually the School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, right? So, uh, I, I had it done that way because do you know what is another word for uh, academy school that's right it's school what's another word for wizardry magic so school of wizardry literally translates to the academy of magical arts and just so you know the academy of magical arts started in the, back back in the 60s okay uh, that that facility was built in 1900s and some of you are going like well the uh hogwarts castle was built centuries ago that's a story okay jk rowling wrote this book in 1997 the academy of magical arts existed it, it, it first started in 1900 uh, uh uh and it actually opened for business in 1963 called the academy of magical arts it literally translates the same academy is school Magic arts is wizardry. It's the same, okay. And we studied all kinds of uh, magic there, uh, and I, I, I could get into how much stuff that we studied there, but I'm not gonna do it right now because I could just do a whole lecture on what we ended up studying there. We were supposed to keep it a secret what we studied there, and it is not card tricks, okay. We did not study card tricks at this castle, Hidden Castle in Hollywood, California. Now, when did I go to that school there? Well, I actually happened to go to that school in 1990. 
Interesting enough, uh, J.K. Rowling on an A&E documentary, and I'll show you some of that, uh, talks about a boy that started at that school of wizardry in 1990. She was going to from Manchester to London on a train. It got stuck. It stopped. And then she thought of this great idea the same year. Really, the same year. Out of all the years it could have been happening to me, like I could have gone to that school in 1980. I could have gone in the 1970s. I mean, it could have been any year, but she wrote the book about me, or I'm sorry, a, um, a boy wizard going to the school of wizardry in 1990, the summer of 1990. When did I go to school there? Summer of 1990. <laughs> that's, that's actually when I went there. Okay. There's the owl, and I'll, I'll go over all this stuff. So this is not, we're, it'll take forever if I do this. So owl, there's a wand, golden sphere, uh, secret entrance, secret entrance, library, ghost. Okay, if you check out those videos, it'll go through all that stuff. Moving paintings, moving paintings. Headmaster, which is named um, Rodor. The, their head, headmaster is called Dumbledore, okay? Diane Zimmerman. Uh, th this is all in the documentary, so let's take a look. This one is in the A&E documentary over to the right. She admits on there when she came up with the story in the summer of 1990. Go check out that documentary. Okay, the year Harry Potter attended Hogwarts. You could hear her talking about it. Over to the left, you can see the newspaper articles that explains and showcases when I actually opened, not only did I attend at the Academy of Magical Arts, the funny thing is on my first day of class, my first day of class, I demonstrated showing uh, these, these, uh, these golden spheres and I had gotten selected to open the future stars of magic on my first day of class it's very nice you know it was a very it was a huge honor this floating ball golden sphere okay that was that interesting uh, there's the wands that we uh, that is showcased in that that's over to the left the wands that they they give out at the academy as the if you become magician of the year okay these are actual wands that we, that, that the academy provides the wands over to the right you know right you know who that is that's harry potter the owl the owl really okay if you look at it okay over to the left you see all the owl symbols within the academy magic arts that's the logo that's the symbolism of magic could have been a it could have been a dragon it could have been a, 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 a it could have been a um, gargoyle could have been a cat right could have been a bat it could have been a multiple of different type of animals okay but that is the symbolism of the school of our school right we've gotten the secret entrance we've gotten the secret library that's only for the magicians even if you're a guest, you cannot go into that library. If you're a guest, you're a guest. You cannot enter that library. Secret library, there's a ghost. Yes, there is a ghost inside of the magic castle. And you actually interact with that ghost. It plays songs for you. You can ask the ghost to play you a song, Irma. And you're thinking, wow, I'd like to go there. Uh, no, sorry. It's only open to magicians. And they're private guests. Okay, it's not a tourist attraction. Uh, there's the the hallways with the moving paintings. There's the moving paintings over there. The director, my director, my instructor, the headmaster. His name is Robert Doran. Featured on the the um, documentary called Make Believe. Look it up on Netflix or anything like that. His stage name is Rodor. Interesting. Wow. I mean. You know, could she have picked a better name? Maybe you know something a little bit different. But that's the name. It, this cannot be denied. That's what what it is. You can check it out. Okay, his real name is Robert Dorian, but he goes under several different aliases. Bob Dorian in this one, but it is Rodor. He goes under the name Rodor, and then Miss Zimmerman, who was an award-winning magician and an enchantress, again featured on Make Believe, and very similar to to her character. Uh, uh, Miss Mc, uh, Professor Mc, uh, McGonagall. I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong, and I'm probably going to get all flamed about that. Uh, McGonagall, okay? That's her. All right. So that right there is another 10 things that matches the first 10. And this is a fact. 
These are facts of what the school of wizardry, or I'm sorry, the school, uh, the Academy of Magical Arts is. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's what it is. You can look this up. I've already compiled it all for uh, together for you and limited information on the website. However, if you go into the castle, anybody that's a member of the Academy of Magical Arts or the Mag been in the Magic Castle could testify to all of this being correct. That is correct. Ten more things. So that's at 20. Are we at 20 now? So we had the first 10, another 10. Okay. Now, there's another video. You should check this out. It is who was the real Hermione Granger. Hermione Granger, she was a heroine in the Harry Potter series. She's Harry Potter's partner. I already named her once, so we're not going to count her again. But some of the abilities that she has, and again, this is another 15-minute video, and I love this video. I, I really did this as a dedication to uh, who it was the number one teenage magician, wizard, illusionist in history was this one girl named Denise. Okay, it was Denise. And undeniably, she cannot, she is... To this day, has not ever been beaten. The scale of illusions that she can do, the magic that she can do, okay, including the star of Make Believe, the documentary. Why? Okay, well, she was at the Academy of Magical Arts. Uh, Hermione Granger, same thing, right? Uh, she was the number one female uh, magician in history, teenage female magician in history, doing the Emmy Awards, uh, doing large scale shows, uh, famous illusions, stuff like that. Okay, the thing was. It wasn't like I was standing going, wow, that girl is so special, and just looking at her and going, wow, I wish I could interact with her. I was her partner. I was her partner. Okay? Uh, she does things like she, trans we, we did things like she would transform herself into a cat, which was great, uh, and then uh, she had a magic wand, right? So, of course, magicians all have wands, I guess. Her wand's a lot cooler, my thing, but she, uh, this is her at Miss Dance Drill Team USA, where she, boom, throws fire right in front of her, everyone, at a dance competition. At a dance competition, in front of, like, laymans or muggles or whatever the heck you want to call it, boom, throws fire from her hands, Okay? featured uh, at the Miss Dance Drill Team USA in 1992. Now, 15 years later, you know, they have showcases of the wand and, you know, doing spells like that, or 1997, whenever, whenever it came out. But that's what it is, right? We also have uh, Denise with her, her magical sword wand like that. I know it's a bad picture at the Emmy Awards. Uh, that's Emma Watson playing... The Hermione Granger. Now, let's keep that in mind. She is an actress. She's not a magician. She's an actress. She reads lines. Okay? She doesn't actually can make fire appear out of her hands. Okay? That's all CG. Let's just keep that in mind. But that's on that. So, if we add those two together, that's another five things that match up. So, now we're at 25 things that is undeniably matches up. Undeniably matches up. So now let's go into the Samurai Wizard, as I was known as back then. I was known as the Samurai Wizard. So was Hayashi the real Harry channel? Not the video, but the channel. It has over 20 videos of different evidence videos that are just going over this. And we don't have time to go through all of them. So I just picked the top five that are definitely the most iconic iconic things out there okay so the magic sword for me over here to the left uh, samurai wizard magic sword fire i shoot fire from my hands i teleport uh i do metamorphosis me I, I transform myself into other things commanding japanese army so over to the right the boy wizard uh, jk rowling changed the names to a couple of these things she had a, mag a magic sword fire fiend or uh, fi fiend fire however they call it app Apparition, where they d disappear from different places, reappear in different places. It's called teleporting, right? Uh, metamorphosis, where you, where they take a potion and they transfigure themselves into a different person. And then the final magic scene. So these are very, very iconic things in the boy wizard story, the Harry Potter story. Now, let's they make things clear. I didn't do everything. Like, I didn't swim with mermaids. Okay? I didn't ride dragons. I didn't ride on a broomstick. Okay, did J.K. Roddy, uh, Rowling add some flavor to that and make it more interesting? Did Hollywood get their little fingers in there and do some more stuff? 
Absolutely. I sure hope they did. Okay. With Hollywood magic. But this is what I had done. I had just taken the top five just real quick. There's more than that. So again, let's take a look at this. Okay. Let's take a look with an open mind. Let's take a look. Okay. Magic Sword. Here it is. Okay. Uh, that's right there. Uh, magic 1990. Me picture with that. And, and you can see with all my videos, plenty of stuff where I'm doing with the sword. Uh, versus 2002 when when Daniel Radcliffe took that picture a uh, fire fiend that's at the magic castle it'll shoot out there 1992 at the world famous magic castle I do actually teleport I do demonstrations of that multiple times here's one uh, an audience hundreds of people in this audience right there I actually go to the back of the stage and instantly go check out that video instantly I actually reappear in the front of the stage within half a second. I disappear from the back and I reappear in the front. And when I reappear in the front, there's a reason why there's a Corvette there. I didn't have a flying car. I just made a Corvette appear up on stage in front of a live audience with, with, with uh, actually the Drill Team Dance Girls. So that is what I do. I, I teleport. I do demonstrations of teleportation. I also do the demonstration of, of metamorphosis, which is being able to transform myself in front of uh, uh, other people, like transform myself physically. This is me at the Emmy Awards, the 44th annual Los Angeles area Emmy Awards in 1992. It was a monumental time because the Rodney King riots just hit and all these people that were in the audience were all the newscasters and all the people that were covering that. This is the LA Emmy Awards, okay? And it was a very unfortunate time at the time, uh, uh, at, at the time of what had happened, okay? Just on a social level, race level, everything, okay? So what I had done in front of the live audience is I actually metamorphosized myself and I turned myself into the host of the show. And then he continues to do the host of the show, the Emmy Awards. That's what I do. If you want to watch it, watch the video, okay? All right. That's that one. Final scene. Uh, it's it's how the Harry Potter series ends, I guess. I actually command a Japanese army with over 180 uh, performers right there. And that's shooting out. We're shooting out streamers that are going right into the audience. Uh, to the to, to audience of 8,000 people. Standing ovation. Wonderful. Pretty identical to the last scene of Harry Potter. How they, how they eventually defeat... Lord Baltimore. That's how I ended up defeating, uh, how I ended up defeating uh, David Copperfield. I did this performance of the 180 backup dancers versus him by himself. He flew on stage by himself. Nothing wrong with that. It's a phenomenal illusion. And that's what I did. Okay. So that's where I'm at with that. That's an additional five. Okay. An additional five. So now let's just total that up. Look at that right there. We are talking about literally 30 things that match up. 30. Okay? So this is the time where I'd like to really challenge many of you out there. All you skeptical people. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to challenge many of the people out there that are like have a religious belief to Harry Potter or J.K. Rowling as being the messiah or some god or how dare you all this stuff i, I want to talk to the logical people out there okay that are that are going to look at this and kind of uh, i'm going to kind of poke fun at you a little bit and tell you things uh that are all true okay so so i want to make sure well, well well you decide you decide if it's all true or not but i'm going to tell you things to kind of poke at you and make you jog your mind and really see if this is something that you can outwit okay if anything all right so let's take a look okay so this is the question that i will be asking okay so keep keep this in mind you've got some information now and i haven't asked this question yet so when it comes time i'm going to have you put in the answer your answer of which one do you think it is okay why does the boy wizard stories match is it because it's a lie Right? Copying Rawling story. Magicians are not wizards. Coincidence are based on two events. Now, let's just talk about what this virtually means. If the stories really do match, what does that mean? Does that mean 
that I, I, Ken Hayashi, the samurai wizard, has something to do with this story of Harry Potter. Hmm. Well, Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. Okay, let's take a look at what who, what, what that what that actually means. The industry. Harry Potter. Okay, has sold over five hundred million books worldwide. Worldwide, translated into seventy three different languages. The last four books consecutively set records as the fastest selling books in history. It is the highest grossing film series of all time, and it's a twenty five billion dollar industry one of the highest grossing media franchises of all time and now they're coming up with this new uh, to continue on with the success fantastic beasts and where to find them okay so why does the story match this is for you now to finally type in your answer in the comment section so i'm not going to pause the video right now I want, i'm going to stay on hold because you've had plenty of time for you to think and go ahead and type in your answer Okay, you don't have, I'm just going to stay here right now. If you just typed it in, we're just going to continue talking. So it's real simple. You write question two, write Q2 or question two. That's fine. Q2. And is it A and then lie? That means it's just a lie. I've been lying to you, right? Someone's lying to you, right? B, C, D, D, it's a coincidence. E, it's based on true events, Okay. Be accountable for your answer. Write it down. And even if you don't want to, please, for your sake, it would just make it more fun. I'm going to ask you more questions, okay? And we can see where you're set at, all right? All right, hopefully you've done that by now. I'm going to continue on, so let's just move on, all right? So the next thing is this. 